I wonder whether you've ever played um, a game that I've done before where you have to put on a blindfold and there's an obstacle course in the room or maybe you're playing it outside and with your blindfold on you have to get around the obstacle course but you have to rely on a friend who's giving you instructions how to get around the course because you can't see it. I'm just going to put a blindfold on now. Uh, when we put this on it's like we're blind it's like we can't see anything and as you head around uh, the obstacle course you've got to trust that your friend is going to take you the right way and that you're not going to bump into anything and hurt yourself um, it's so much better isn't it to do things uh, when we can see where we're going now some people believe that um, trusting in God is a little bit like that it's like we're blind and we have to trust him without seeing God and they think that that's a bit daft why would you trust somebody when you can't see them well, we're going to think uh, this morning about a person in the Bible who helps us to understand a little bit more about that. About a week after Jesus had come back to life and had risen from the tomb on that first Easter Sunday, his friends, the disciples, were gathered together in a room and suddenly there was Jesus with them in the room, really there, his real physical body. He was really alive. They were beside themselves with excitement. It was wonderful. They were so, so happy. But, you know, one of the disciples, one of Jesus's friends, wasn't there that day. And when he heard about it, he didn't believe them. His name was Thomas. And Thomas doubted that Jesus had really come back to life because he said, well, I just can't believe it unless I see Jesus for myself. I don't believe it. It was as if G uh, Thomas had that blindfold over his eyes and he didn't trust the, what his friends were saying to him. Now, about a week after that, his, uh, Thomas was with all his friends, the disciples, and this time when Jesus came, Thomas was there and he saw Jesus for real, for himself. He didn't have to trust his friends and what they were saying to him because he could see Jesus for real. And Jesus was really lovely to Thomas. He didn't get cross with him for having doubted that Jesus had come back to life. Jesus took Thomas and said, look, Thomas, these are my hands, the hands that were nailed to the cross. And he showed Thomas the holes in the palms of his hands where the nails had gone through and held him on the cross. And as Jesus um, showed that to Thomas, Thomas saw and he believed that Jesus really was alive. And, and I think it's lovely that, that Jesus didn't get cross with Thomas for, for doubting him and not believing him. And, you know, the Bible is full of examples of other people who doubted God and found it hard to trust him. You know, Abraham and Sarah didn't believe God that, that uh, he would help them to have a baby. You can understand why, because they were so old. Sarah even laughed about it. She laughed because she didn't believe what God had said. Moses and Gideon both didn't trust God either. They found it really hard to believe that God could use them to lead God's people. And yet God had got it right. And throughout the Bible, uh, more and more people, more and more times, there are examples of people who struggled to trust God. In fact, David, when he writes the Psalms, they're full of times when he's crying out to God, saying, God, where are you? And he doubted. But, you know, for each of those people and for Thomas, when they had that opportunity to bring their doubts to God and to ask God and to ask Jesus, they then grew in their faith. And I think that can really help us because I bet we all have questions, don't we? We all have doubts. We all have things that we struggle to believe. You know, where is God? Why can't we see God? Does God really exist if we can't see him? Did Jesus really die? Did Jesus really come back to life? Is Jesus in heaven? Does heaven exist? 
these questions are good questions for us to ask. But you see, unless we ask those questions, we can't get the answers. And when we get the answers, then we can use those answers to help us to grow our faith. But if we keep those questions hidden away, then we can't get answers and we can't find out what the truth is. Now, we know that lots of people have doubts. Grown-ups have doubts, children have doubts. And I want you to take a moment now to think about what doubts you have. Uh, what don't you understand about God and Jesus? What would you ask Jesus if you were in the room with him, just like Thomas was? And we're going to think a little bit more about how we can deal with those um, doubts and those questions when we do our craft activity. So um, have a think for now and we'll come back again soon.